Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Castrated lion, just be patient. In this video, we're going to have some fun with a scammer who claims that he's called Lee Taffanelli. And when I say we, I'll tell you why in a minute. He popped up on Facebook on the account of my alter ego Annie, where he appeared under the people you might know list. So Annie looked at his profile saw he was a civil engineer, saw that he'd been to Oxford University and sent him a friend request, which of course he accepted. I have more than one alter ego, so for a bit of fun, another of my alter egos also sent him a friend request, which he also accepted. So that's why I said we are going to have some fun. And we did. To be absolutely clear, my alter egos are totally made up. They do not exist. So Annie said, I spotted you went to Oxford Uni. I'm wondering if you remember my older brother, Glenn Whitshaw. He was born in 1960, so you must have been there at the same time. He was in St John's College. What do you think? Did our man remember the fictitious Glenn? Of course he did. He said, yes, I remember Mr Glenn. It has been a very long time. We all separated from school. Annie then asked him what he did for a living, and he said... I am a civil contractor for years now. I do big contracts almost everywhere. If you've watched any of my other romance scam videos, you'll start to see a theme developing here. He then went on to tell Annie, I live in Spain and I also work in Spain. Meanwhile, he got chatting with my other alter ego, who told him that she was a widow and that she lived in the northeast of England. So he asked her, how long have you been a widow? And she told him three years. Obviously, it's hard work chatting to two women at the same time. So getting confused, the scammer then asked Annie how long she'd been widowed. So Annie told him, I'm not a widow. My husband left me three years ago. Meanwhile, at my other alter ego's account, I'm not going to say her name. So I think I'll just call her B. Meanwhile, over at B's account, he said, myself, I have been a widow for blank years now. I lost my wife in car accident 2019 February. So I guess he meant to say two years, which was interesting because at the same time he was chatting to Annie, to whom he said, myself, I lost my wife in auto accident three years ago, left me with two kids. Annie, of course, asked him how old the kids were. And he said, I have 11 years son and six years daughter. They live in US. Annie said it was a shame that they couldn't be with him and said that he must miss them so much and asked who they live with. And he told her they are living with their aunt. Mr Taffanelli and Annie were getting on really well. He said, I'm seriously looking for a God-fearing woman to continue life with. Oh yes, said Annie, it would be lovely to have a man again. It's OK living with mother, but it's not the same as having a partner to share life with. Yes, Annie, it can't never the same, he agreed. There's another life if you have a good and responsible partner. And Annie said, I know there is. That's my dream. A lovely man and a home of my own. I know both will happen soon. To which Loverboy replied, where do you wish to live? In UK or US? So there you have it. Within the space of about 10 lines, he was intending to live with her. The next day, he was telling Annie, is my wish now to start a new life with you? They were talking about buying a place together. And Annie said, I don't need a mortgage. I have my divorce settlement, so I can just buy it. Annie sent him some photos of a two bedroom apartment. And he then started saying, I also have some money in the US with a finance company for about four years now. It's just that the demurrage have grown, which I have to pay to the company. Then the money will transfer to you in UK. That's why I was asking for more bigger one. Annie found a three bedroom apartment overlooking the river and suggested that she should make an appointment to go and view it, to which he replied, Sweetheart, I think it's good to make an appointment with the estate agent. Over on Hangouts, where he'd suggested talking to B, things weren't going so well. He asked, How's your day? What are you doing now? And she said, I'm eating lunch. He said, Good, am I invited? Can I see your launch? And she said, If you want to. It's just a sandwich. Why would you want to see a sandwich? And he said, is normal. To which B replied, what do you mean, is normal? So he said, send me your photo sitting. If you send me what you are eating, is normal. Not a bad thing. 
Normal to send a photo of sandwich? What a silly thing to say. Send me a photo of your sandwich. Anyway, I've eaten it now. I can send you a photo of the empty plate if that would make you happy. To which the scammer replied, ha ha ha, okay, send me your photo today. So B did just that. She said, okay, don't say you didn't ask for it. Here's my empty plate. Send me your photo, he asked B, who replied, send me yours first. Our scammer didn't like that. He said, I asked you first, you know. Why are you being difficult to a man that's so much interested and in love with you? To which B replied, indeed, but a gentleman always allows a lady to go first. So he did, and he sent B a Photoshop photograph of a man with a tiger. To which B replied, that's a bit larger than my cat. And he said, is not cat, OK? And B said, well, it ain't a horse. And he said, it's a castrated lion. So now you understand the thumbnail picture at the start of this video. The relationship went downhill rapidly after B said, what do you do in Spain? And he said, I'm a civil engineer. B asked, what kind of engineering do you do? So he replied again, civil engineer. And she said, yes, you said that, but what do you actually do? And he said, road construction, interchange. B said, OK, sounds complicated. I probably wouldn't understand it. And he replied, high level sweeper. So B said, what's a sweeper? So he said, scrapper. So B said, what's a scrapper? Go on, I know you love a quiz. What is the scrapper? Long story building. B isn't as sweet and kind as Annie, which is probably why they weren't getting on so well. So she said, sorry, I don't understand. If it's a long story, just tell me briefly. Yeah, long story building, said our wannabe Romeo. Yes, said B, but you haven't told me why it's a long story. Did it take you a long time to build it? And what's it got to do with roads and interchanges? Or is that the story? I hate troublesome people, said Romeo. Why all that question? I told my job. You keep asking. I try to explain on the things we do. You keep asking me question. Ask someone who is a civvy engineer or go to Google and ask. So B googled long story and got this definition, a description of how something happened that is complicated to explain. Why are you late? It's a long story. I'll tell you later. So she said, is that what you mean? I googled long story. I don't understand why you can't just explain yourself. If it's a long story, just shorten it and tell me in a sentence. Lover boy got himself stuck in a groove. He replied, I'm a civil engineer. Take it or leave it. I'm not here to argue much. I'm looking for a responsible, respectful woman to continue my life with. She said, I find it odd that you can't tell me about your job. Why not? To which he replied, I'm a civil engineer. She said, you keep saying that. What did you do at work today? And he said, we were on construction today. It's an interchange going. Ah, oh, OK, she said. Were you doing the building work? My good friend, he said, you ask too much question. I've told you several times I am in Spain. What's all these questions for? Followed by, do you want to marry me? To which B said, I don't understand. I thought we were making conversation. Why don't you want to talk about your work? Why would I want to marry a man that can't make a conversation? Back on Facebook, Loverboy was ready to talk to his finance company. He said to Annie, Annie, this three bedroom is very OK. I think we have to get this one. I have to talk to the finance in the US to know how much is my demurrage. When I'm done with that, I will also let know. The next day, he said one of the accounts office, Mrs Brenda Landers, assured me that whenever I'm ready, my fund will be transferred to me. She said, Mr. Lee, once you clear the demur rage, we are ready to transfer your money. A few hours later, he said, for clearance of my fund from the finance company, the demurrage now is $32,800. Once I paid, my fund will be transferred to any destination I want from Missouri, USA. What is demurrage? Why would he be paying it on a financial fund? Demurrage is defined as a charge payable to the owner of a chartered ship on failure to load or discharge the ship within the time agreed. Scammers often use demurrage as an excuse to ask for money when they claim they have a trunk box full of cash that needs to be released from customs. I've never come across a scammer before 
who uses it in relation to a fund that he claims has been invested. When Annie asked him how much money he had, he said, I have $1.8 million with the finance company. Claiming that he had to pay the demurrage before he could access the fund, he said, Annie, I have $10,000 here with me in Spain. I want to send it to them. I want you to help me. We need a balance of $22,800. OK, said Annie. So he asked, what can you do? And she said, you have to tell me what you want me to do. And he said, I want you to help me. Let's pay them. OK, she said. How? And he said, I will ask them their account to send. Sweetheart, he said, I want you to send them $22,800. US She said, OK, but I'll need your finance company's details. I will send them 10k from Spain tomorrow, he said. I will get back to you before the close of the day. OK, sweetheart, she said. I'll wait to hear from you. I don't think this scammer had ever managed to get a potential victim to agree to pay him such a large amount of money, because clearly, after that, he didn't know what to do. He told Annie, yes, I have emailed them for the details, is waiting to hear from them. Once it has been sent to me, I will forward the details to you immediately. That was followed by, let's have a little patience, I believe today they will send me the details. Followed a few hours later by, sweetheart, I'm also waiting for them so that I can go and wire 10,000 US dollars I told you I have with me. We're not going to miss that apartment, I promise. Kisses and hugs. By now it was Friday morning, so Annie said, will you have the money by Monday? He said, sweetheart, I already told you everything. We will have the money transferred to your account once I clear the demurrage. I'm waiting for the details to send what I have here with me to the finance company. And then, making an excuse, because he still didn't know where to ask her to send the money, he said, I learnt there's snow, the accounts office is not yet in their office. And a while later followed that by saying, I'm waiting for the details, sweetheart. We're paying for the apartment by next week. Once I have the details, I will forward it to you to remit to them too, as we have discussed yesterday. And finally... By dinner time on Friday in the UK, said, please, sweetheart, be patient, OK, everything will be fine. Finally, on Saturday morning, he sent these details. The bank name was wrong. So Annie said, my bank don't know a blank bank. Are you sure that's the right name? So he resent the details with the bank name spelt correctly. Annie said, oh, that explains it. You got the name of the bank wrong. He said, yes, first was wrong and then added, there's a network problem. Please hold till next week when they authorise to send. I don't know what happened there because I did report the account, but not in time for that to happen because it was still night time in the USA and it was a Saturday morning. Finally, at about five o'clock on Sunday evening, he sent the full name, address and bank details of someone in the States. I reported this to the bank concerned, not expecting that anything would happen as it was a Sunday. And within half an hour, I received a message from the bank telling me that they'd sent the information to their security team to take proper action and thanking me for sending them the details of the conversation. I can't think of any legitimate reasons why someone that you've recently met online would ask you to send them money, so please be careful out there. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it, please share it, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again in another Keep Safe on the Net video on YouTube.